every weekend. If you're interested in any future events that we host, please do follow us on Instagram at Millie underscore group for updates. So here is how today's panel is going to look. We have some pre-prepared questions already, but we encourage you guys to submit as many as you like via the Q&A box here on Zoom. Throughout the hour, we're going to go through these questions and during this time, we'll let our panellists answer your questions too. And whether they're general, or they're more specific to a panellist or which university that they went to, I really encourage you all to make the most of these fantastic panellists and I'm sure that they will be more than willing to help you in any way that they can. So Sweden, Scandinavian style, Vicar, Greta Thunberg, ABBA and breathtaking scenery and landscapes. But what is it like to study there? Speaking of which, here are our experts. Let me introduce our amazing panellists, Elma, Sydney, Simon and Asma, all of which are going to share their wisdom and experiences of Swedish University. So please can we kick off with each of your names, the city you are currently in and where you are from, what you were or are studying and one fun fact about yourself. All right, I guess I'll start then. Uh, my name is Alma and I am from and also currently based in Stockholm. I attend the Stockholm School of Economics and I'm currently studying in their international business program. Uh, as for a fun fact about myself, um, I guess this will become apparent, but I did go to high school in the United States and I lived there for a total of six years, which is also why my accent is uh, quite clearly American at this point in my life. Hello everyone, my name is Sydney and uh, fun fact, I'm not from Australia, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> Number of people get I'm from Australia because of my name. Uh, I'm living in Sweden now, so I come for living in Sweden, I decided to study international comparative education here. Uh, so that's all about me now. Hi guys, um, my name is Simon. I'm uh, based, I come from and I'm currently based in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, I studied in Sweden and I actually graduated 2018, so a while ago. But um, fun fact about me is that before moving to Sweden, I lived in a, in, in a few different European countries, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands and Poland. Um, and and uh, yeah, looking forward to today's session. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm I I'm still to introduce myself. Um, so I'm Asma, and I I'm doing my PhD. Uh, since 2012, I've been here. Uh, and a fun fact about me is that I've been to more than 15 countries, lived in more than five, and uh, yeah, so. It's quite, um, I have a lot of multinational experience. Uh, uh, so I look forward to talking more about us and the, the university we study in. Also, Asma, I really love the Northern Lights. You've really committed here to that as well. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. So how did you guys decide about what course you wanted to study at your chosen university what kind of tools and resources did you use um, and I think the reason why we're sort of asking this is because the people that might be listening in are going to be you know going through this stage of trying to find out whether they even want to go to university so how did you, what kind of tools and resources whether that was online or whether the school that you were at did you use all right um so I just maybe to provide some essential context. I think that I was a very confused high schooler. I always really liked school and but I think it was difficult for me to determine whether or not I just enjoyed the learning format of being in school or whether I enjoyed like the actual subjects themselves. Uh, so I was really unsure about what I wanted to go to uni for when I was you know, 17, 18. I was trying to figure it out. But that being said, I've always really loved history. And at the high school that I was at, I got lucky enough that I had an incredible history faculty. Um, and so that sort of led me to pursue economic history and international relations at the beginning of my university career. Uh, obviously, I'm in business now, but <laughs> neither here nor there. We can talk about that later. 
Um, with regard to the tools that I used, I think I did a lot of prep work sort of unknowingly simply by talking to my teachers. I mean, you can call me a bit of a teacher's pet if you want to. I will completely accept that label. Um, but I did have a lot of lengthy sort of like abstract discussions with like my history and English teachers uh, and even my debate team coach at the time, actually, about the sorts of things that I might want to study in the future. Uh, and that was definitely very helpful and something that I recommend sort of use the mentors in your life to, you know, discuss these things and really parse them out. Uh, and then when it came down to it, I really just did my research on the course catalog and sort of the, the different departments at Stockholm University where I did my undergrad. And then I picked what seemed most interesting. So, um, but that being said, main takeaway, uh, it's okay to change your mind and you will figure it out because of course I did as well. Uh, so you got this, it's okay. <laughs> You just take a line on that, change your mind. I changed my mind in my career several times. I started as a dancer. I went to journalism, then marketing, and now education. So it's a way to reshape yourself through time. And one thing that I learned here is that that's possible to do that. They offer a range of courses and this small program that you can take to change when you decide to. So my, I start first because I decided to do a PhD. So I'm preparing myself for a PhD. So when I moved to Sweden to transfer credits and recognize your certificate for the art school, it's a lot of things in between. So I decided to do also a master in education here to also to have a little more uh, credits. Uh, so the tool that I used here was a website that they have where you can see all the universities at once. So you start to, to filter by type of course you like or things like that. And there come a range of possibilities in different universities in Sweden that you can apply. So, so it's much easier than you go in each university and look for that. You go in that website where you can find all those information at once. Um, yeah, and my focus is to go for PhD. That's why I decided to do uh, a Master in International Comparative Education. So now I'm on that path. So that's that. Well, for me, it was a little bit different, guys, because um, before before applying uh, for, for this uh, uh, master in intellectual European intellectual property uh, law, I studied at um, uh, one of the Dutch universities that was uh, in, in Maastricht in, in the Netherlands. And uh, so I was lucky enough to already know that uh, law is something that I want to pursue in the future. Um, I was even lack here uh, to know what uh, what direction do I want to uh, follow, do I want to pursue. And this was because uh, during my studies, during my bachelor studies, I already got involved in a um, extra project that was that was a part time job in a, a company, IT legal company that uh, dealt with uh, intellectual property uh, matters. And that, um, that really, really helped me. So, um, but of course we have this lack factor here, but on the other hand, we have this curiosity that I, that I had at that time, uh, curiosity to, uh, to do something extra, to go beyond the, the, the regular, uh, course of studies and to get involved extra projects. And um, I guess that is also really, really important that broadens your mind, that broadens your perspectives. And uh, of course, once uh, everything was there, I just uh, went online and started looking uh, for uh, master programs that could address my, uh, my needs. And um, actually Stockholm, uh, Stockholm University and this particular program, master program, uh, turned out to be one of the best in Europe. So um, both then uh, taking into consideration economic factor, factors and geographical factors, uh, I, I decided that's the best choice for me. And uh, there we go. That's how it started. As for me, I, um, I had an interest in research uh, and uh, I just googled <laughs> the first tool that comes to mind and uh, honestly I had no clue about how Swedish universities work how the PhD is here and uh, I would encourage everyone to know more about what they want and uh, PhD here is an employment so 
like it it clicked all the boxes that it, I needed so yeah um that was my journey I applied just when the procedure was online and that's that's my journey thank you so much you had a real variety of answers there but I think the main the main thing that we kind of focused in on was obviously with your research is using the people who you know are surrounded by you and teach you and being a teacher's pet we're going to try and change the stereotype it's a really good thing because they are experts in their area which means that they're probably going to know what's what's best for you and how to get into what you'd like to do um we're going to move on to your your degrees now and kind of talk about your probably your favorite parts but also the parts that you least expected and I guess in the sense of how they were structured obviously we've had the coronavirus and the pandemic so that's massively changed the way that people have attended university could you give us some insight on what that experience was like for you and yeah what your favorite part was what was a module that you enjoyed but also what you didn't quite expect and has either been good for you or something that you wish you had prepared for a bit better Ooh, in terms of what I wish I would have prepared for better, I think there is no way to really prepare for the pandemic per se, but I will say that I was definitely ill-equipped in the beginning to sort of deal with uh, the strains of like completely virtual education, if you will. I I did go through it. I mean, I think the, the latter half of my uh, undergrad experience was completely online. Uh, and that was definite not that I could have prepared for it, but it was more difficult for me than I than I had originally expected. I think the sort of social part of studying turned out was very important to me. And I didn't even really know that about myself until that happened. Um, that being said, though, I'm really happy to be in the degree that I'm at currently at SSC. Virtually everything is taught in person now, um, and some courses even have obligatory attendance. So you get a lot more of that sort of social component. Uh, and that, to me, I find that that's really important. And since attendance in person is always really high, uh, you also get this like nice social cohesion within the class, which I really like. Uh, with regard to like projects or course modules. I think that since I started off my undergrad experience studying something that was different from what I actually ended up getting my degree in later, uh, that definitely uh, influenced sort of like the way that I tailored my own experience later on. Uh, I took courses in development theory and global political economy very early on. Uh, and that completely changed how I conceptualized my worldview in a lot of ways uh, and definitely impacted the types of projects that I took on later on when I switched to business administration. Uh, and it was very fun to be able to sort of combine those interests since business tends to be pretty broad. Uh, so, and that definitely made everything a lot more fun for me as well. I very much enjoyed that. Uh, I'm only a semester into my master's degree at SSC, but I've had one course in particular that I had in the beginning was super, super interesting. It's called Managing Human Dynamics. It's taught by a brilliant researcher named Payaniki Abari, uh, and it taught me a lot about negotiation and group psychology and power dynamics, which was super, super interesting, and I still think about the content a lot. Uh, so I definitely recommend looking into him if anyone is curious about those sorts of topics. Okay, for me, uh, I think one thing that I, I would like to be more prepared at the beginning was to have more fun with my friends. But it, we, we had COVID in between, of course, that, that was a huge problem. But I was so focused on learning. I, I'm, I'm kind of academic. When I'm studying, I'm studying. And... Uh, I didn't figure it out that that one thing that you learn is with the, the word logo is find a balance between everything that you are doing. And sometimes when you come and you have a lot of pressure because you have to find a job later on, you have to go back to your account or whatever plans you have. And then you start to avoid some social relation because you're too focused on have the highest grades all the time. And then through the program, you learn that it's not about your grade, but about your journey in the process. And that's one thing that I really take from this course that, that we learned. Because we had COVID, all those things, although Sweden didn't have a very strong restriction or like other countries, still we learned a lot in this process and the contact wasn't that so easy. 
but in the very end we start to be a little more flexible on that. Um, when it's about the course models, uh, mo uh, how, how they, they shape the education here in the master that I took is very different than Brazil, for example. In Brazil, we have like eight subjects at the same time during six months. In Sweden, take one, one by time. So five weeks or 10 weeks, depending on how many points do it's the course. And that for me was very interesting to feel because you could fo focus just on that instead of have a lot of things going around. Now it's, it's about this, now it's about that, and you don't know what you do anymore, you're lost. And that's one thing that I really, like it here because I could just focus on one thing at a time. The course that I really enjoyed a lot because I have this kind of, uh, I'm kind of a language nerd. I speak different language because I like to learn. I'm very curious on that. And then we have this uh, language and uh, uh, how you teach language and for education, how it's important to, uh, when you're teaching the multi uh, diverse environment like international courses so that you have people from around the world use English as the main language, but it's still you do not access the language in the same way. The content through the language can be a problem sometimes. So that course gives me a lot of insights. And uh, I'm writing an article to publish soon about that as well. Maybe you're going to read soon. <laughs> That's all. Uh, so, so uh, first of all, guys, I, um, I actually, I was again, I was lucky to um, start and finish my studies in in Sweden uh, prior to to the pandemic. So, um, but um, hopefully, everything is now coming back to 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 how it used to be. And uh, what I'm gonna say, it's still gonna be valid and actual and useful for you. Uh, so um, I arrived to Sweden being quite well prepared and um, I knew that I can expect uh, similar things from the university as as I could have as I could expect from uh, one of the Dutch universities. Uh, so I knew that the uh, people at the university will come from many different countries. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, um, the the group will be really diverse and international, and and of course, it, this this is exactly how it was. Um, you know what really surprised me uh, was that was the amount of extra side projects opportunities that that you could pick up on during uh, the the program, and uh, it was. Uh, Perhaps something more than that, because uh, previously I've never engaged into many of those uh, opportunities, even though I told you that I, I already uh, worked on the side. But in, in Stockholm, um, I, I did, and I did to the fullest extent, and I am pretty sure I will uh, be able to talk to you about it in a, in a moment. Uh, but uh, that was first thing. Uh, the second thing was was something that Sydney has already mentioned, uh, meaning um, the structure of the of the uh, courses. At the time, uh, at one time, uh, there were only two uh, courses, and that really allowed me to focus on each of them. Uh, spent um, fair amount of time studying and uh, and. Uh, deepening one uh, of them at the time and uh, that was that was wonderful because that really uh, gives you uh, room to explore to focus on the subject and to really decide at the end whether you like it or not because because as we as we mentioned coming even even at this stage even uh, if you are applying for a master degree there's uh, you don't know everything right and you come also to to find out things about yourself and what you like what you want to do and uh, in fact, many people after uh, graduating from master degree, they they uh, they go along and, and start another one, and it's uh, and it's completely normal. So and there's really no right or wrong way uh, way to go. And uh, as long as you have the space to explore yourself, to to um, explore your interests, that's that's the best you can get, I guess. And uh, to me, Stockholm was the place that really allowed me to to uh, to do it and uh, to explore myself. Cool. Um, so I I love this master's experiences that I'm hearing about. But in PhD, you have a lot more freedom, 
uh, you, you don't have a structured, most uh, of the departments don't have a structured uh, system in place for PhD. So you have this flexibility to choose whatever courses you want, but still, uh, I mean, you're doing the thesis full time together. You have to have some uh, credits, which is uh, in varies from 60 to 100 something in different, um, depending on which faculty uh, you are in. So in my case, in the beginning, there were a lot. So I got pressurized to choose a lot of courses. Some of them, yes, I enjoyed, but some I felt, oh, I'm being pushed. Uh, but I think uh, it's important to remember what the purpose of doing this is. Like in the end of the day, if it's not helping you move forward with your thesis, if it's not helping you in your work, then it, I mean, it's no point getting those points in the beginning. Like you will figure it out uh, towards even towards the end of your journey. So don't rush it. Just, you know, take it easy and um, see what benefits you. So, yeah, that would be my advice. We touched on so many things there. I think just as Asma was saying about embracing, perhaps um, embracing what you're trying to do, but also at the same time facing adversity and trying to see it all as a learning process as well. And obviously we kind of touched on that with the pandemic and how it could be seen as a, as a drawback, but actually um, it's given a lot of flexibility, you know, whether people like learning online or whether they like going into the classes perhaps covid has given a bit more of a flexible structure to learning for a lot of for a lot of people um so i feel like simon was slightly touching on it there and I, i'm really glad that he did because we're going to start talking about opportunities including kind of work placements or internships or just that work experience that i think a lot of students kind of um want to kind of engage with with their studies maybe so that they have some something to take with them perhaps when they're applying for future jobs um, so what kind of opportunities did you guys either see or engage with or did any of your uh, course mates engage with as well while you were studying your chosen course? I think for me, there is definitely like a difference between the kinds of jobs that not only myself have had now undergrad versus masters, but also when it comes to my friends. Um, I think during the later part of my undergrad, for example, I worked in retail at a local sort of independent boutique, uh, which was super fun and worked really well while I was writing my thesis and whatnot, because it was very flexible and I had a lovely manager, which was very perfect at the time. Uh, and But now, for example, for the past semester, I was working at Arlo Foods, which is a very large FMCG company here in Sweden, uh, as a student assistant. Uh, which was a lot more corporate, but definitely maybe gave me a bit more career experience in terms of sort of like orienting myself towards what it is that I want to do in the future. Um, and I think that this is sort of has been the case consistently, not only for me, but also for the people around me. Uh, when I was in undergrad, a lot of people had different kinds of flexible jobs. Uh, so maybe they worked in retail like me or as baristas. I know a lot of people that worked at banks, funnily enough. Uh, so there was definitely a bit more variation versus now at the master level, I find that the people that do work, that have the time to, um, tend to work in more corporate type environments and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, the work that I have had, I've essentially secured on my own without much school intervention. So I don't think that I can be very helpful with regard to that but maybe my fellow panelists have some better advice for those better advice i don't know <laughs> but i can tell that in sweden when it's about internship it can be a little different for other countries um in brazil normally we receive when you're doing internship they pay you in sweden normally don't they do not have this policy because the student have this kind of um uh, support from the state or so on is a little bit different for international students also different because you cannot have access to that so it's a lot of things in between uh, but I have a lot of friends that went to to do internships in UNESCO in Paris for example because they like our program here people that went to OECD myself I was in a process to do an internship in Italy but because COVID other things and PhD process I didn't went that so international organizations they really like our program uh, especially because 
come from the Stockholm University, that's a strong brand. Um, we have a lot of students that now is work on the schools in the administration process, but also teaching because some of them come from the teaching process, other ones go for the administrative process. So there, there is a very range of areas that you can work um, when you, you do the program, because the program, although it's focused on education, in the whole process, we learn a lot of skills that's required for any kind of job. One thing that's very strong in our program, and I guess the other programs as well as the same, is the group work. We have a lot of a group work and own research. You have to do by yourself, discuss, and then you come to teach on the class with the other students. Is that we call as Philippe class. So the teacher becomes just one observer, and the students start to share the knowledge, and then they come to organize the whole process. So you become, you take ownership of the process. So because of that ability that you develop here, it's very easy when you go for job market because they know that you somebody are gonna take the leadership when you need and somebody are gonna really work with the team when you need. So it's something that I take very strong. Uh, right now I'm involved with the TEDx Stockholm. That's also um, part of the TED talk. Uh, so I'm their producer and now I'm just changing position to organize the whole other teams. And I'll see other process for other organizations to work with them as well. And a little before I was working with the communication to help migrants that come into Sweden to integrate society under the, the Swedish context. So basically it's a little bit my journey and the tips about the process. Really, really in interesting and inspiring. Uh, I would like to I would like to say one keyword: empowerment. And um, that's really what I associate with, with my time in Stockholm. Uh, and I don't want to talk here about my job that I had already at the moment of, uh, of arriving to Stockholm, because uh, I worked for four years remotely before it was, you know, popular. <laughs> um, uh, but um, I would like to talk about one of the best uh, opportunities that I that I got during my uh, my time uh, in in Sweden. That was a mood court competition. Uh, and what is mood court? Is a simulated uh, 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 legal proceeding in front of the court. Uh, you have judges. You have uh, um, two sides of the of the legal proceeding. Uh, you're either defendant or opponent, and uh, and that was that was advertised to us at the very beginning of the of the year that everyone would like who would like to engage is very welcome and i thought why not i've never done it before i had a few mood courts as a part of my studies in uh, in the netherlands but but this was this was uh, different because this was a uh, a pretty complex it was a nordic mood court so it had uh, both national and um, regional slash international phase. And um, I really got involved in, in this one and it really consumed a lot of my free time, but was really important. It was highly encouraged by the, by the staff, by uh, the professors. They offered a lot of help. Uh, along the way, we were also, because I was in a team of two, we were also um, uh, assisted by to uh, uh, Swedish law firms from Stockholm. So uh, we could reach out to them for any advice. They helped us to prepare both uh, written uh, submissions and, and then oral submissions. And, um, and actually, actually uh, we won a national phase. Uh, we got to represent Sweden in, uh, in the finals. The finals uh, took place in Helsinki. And we flew there, we spent a few days in Helsinki, and then we were also lucky to win this one too. And, and it was a great experience because it was the first time Sweden won in 10 years, I guess. So uh, at the end of the day, the reward was that we had a nice dinner with uh, Supreme Court judges from uh, Norway, from Denmark. And it was a really, really great experience. And it really empowered me to, to do more stuff on my own. And um, it also inspired me to write my thesis uh, the best way I can do. And uh, uh, also, uh, it was it was it was uh, it was great because uh, for the thesis, uh, I also got the very good grade. My and even I I didn't know what to do afterwards, but uh, I was lucky to be approached by the by the uni staff, and they said, you know, your thesis is quite nice. Maybe it will help uh, students uh, next year to 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 show them how to write the thesis. So so 
first of all, you have to be, again, proactive, but you're really empowered to, to do something and you're really encouraged to do something. And, and, and then if you do a great job, it's, it doesn't, uh, it's not lost. It will be most certainly used for the good of everyone. Uh, but at the end of the day, anything you do, you do for yourself, and um, and that's what's really important. So I guess that was that was uh, the most valuable experience when it comes to uh, extra extra involvement projects, internships. Because because even though it's not an internship per se, it really really helped me, and it uh, really built a little bit of a network as well. So that's also really important in the future. Wow, I would not be able to beat that, but <laughs> uh, I have taught students and um, I, as per my experience, I've seen that uh, if uh, you connect well, like you need to network even within the class and uh, also with your teachers and whoever, you know, you can get your hands on basically because uh, uh, Swedish society is a very well connected society and is a trust based society. So what happens is if somebody already knows someone, you have a much more chance of getting that opportunity rather than, you know, um, individually applying so um it will help you even after you have done your degree and uh, so keep a focus on the networking part and also like these um there are opportunities for exchange programs i've seen a lot of my uh fellows going uh for exchanges uh, even at phd level and also um you have this um, very special thing <laughs> in two universities in Sweden, Uppsala and Lund. Uh, both universities have nations, and uh, it's a it's a very old tradition here uh, to become a part of nation. It was even compulsory before 2010 if you're uh, a part of the Uppsala or Lund University to be a member of nation um, because they provide you with funding. They and they can give you a, a chances with this internship, even offer you assistance um, in like uh, finding jobs within the nation. Small things, and it's actually student base so students work together towards these things and um, so I highly encourage you if you're gonna be in between these two uh, to do that and um, yeah uh, uh, opportunities I mean network again <laughs> thank you so much I mean what a variety of experiences but also just some little gems of advice there that basically nothing is going to come to you and you need to go out and ask questions and not be afraid because no question is a stupid question but that is the whole point of networking and how you build trust between people exactly and then also um on what simon focused on there is using those opportunities in a really positive way and giving back because i genuinely do think that that kind of grows grows you as an individual makes you more confident and then it means that you can then approach different opportunities knowing that you worked really hard on it and then you can you know confidently go ahead with whatever you're interested in having seeked out these little opportunities alongside what you're studying um but I also feel like you focused on there a lot of things were, that were kind of Sweden centric which is obviously really important part of this panel is we're talking about Swedish university but also studying and living in Sweden so I kind of wanted to like steer away from the study and talk a bit more about you know things like accommodation campuses what your experience was of, of living and you know nightlife and all these different parts of, of, of studying and being um, a student has, has been like for you um, in Sweden. So I'll start with accommodation maybe because I am actually coming to you from my current student accommodation. So I live in student housing offered by SSSB which is the student housing authority here in Stockholm. So if you attend any of the universities here, then this is sort of like the housing authority that you can queue for apartments with. Uh, so you have to have a an active student union membership and course participation at your school in order to collect queue days. Uh, and when, once you collect enough queue days to sort of go to the top of like the ranking uh, for the flats that you can put in uh, your interest for, that's when you typically get an accommodation. 
Uh, and I've been ha very happy with mine so far. Right now, I live in a collective with three other students, uh, which has been super fun because uh, none of them go to my school either. So it's been super fun to get to know them. Like one of my flatmates is a dentist and we probably never would have met uh, if we did not live together. So that's definitely a super fun part of it. Um, but then previously to me living here, I lived in my own studio apartment about 30 minutes north of central Stockholm, but the communications were still quite nice. And so it didn't present a problem at the time. Um, so I would definitely recommend, I mean, of course, like the Q days is definitely an obstacle, especially if you're international. Um, but if you are able to like get into student accommodation via SSSB, I really recommend it. Sometimes people that go on exchange sublet their flats while they're away. And so that's a really nice way to maybe get in for like six months while you're saving Q days and whatnot. Uh, and I think also right now there is like a deal going on where if you live in a student dormitory, you collect, I think, double the days once you've lived in the dormitory for 180 days. Uh, so that could be nice to know if you're looking to really add the Q days up quickly. Uh, as for campus life, I'd say that sort of similar to internships and career stuff, there is a ton of opportunities. You just have to go for them. Uh, like I've run a student organization for responsible for sustainability and sort of social responsibility. I run a podcast while I was an undergrad. Um, right now at SSE, I'm in the SEMS Club, which has a buddy program for international exchange students, and there's a book club and a ton of like fun initiatives. So definitely don't be afraid to sort of like be gregarious and go for the things that you're interested in, um, because especially at SSE, they have a super, super active uh, student union. Uh, and I think the last thing that I want to drive home is banquet culture, which I don't know, you guys tell me if that is something that you'll find in other places, but in my experience, it's very specifically Swedish. Um, so there is like regular banquets that are typically hosted by clubs and societies at Swedish universities. And I would really recommend attending these. It usually costs a little bit of money because you have to pay for your food and whatnot. Um, but it's a really good way to be exposed to Swedish traditions regarding like songs and games and stuff like that. Uh, and you typically get to know the people that you're sitting with quite well. So I would definitely recommend participating in that if you like sort of dressing up and whatnot. Okay, I can take it the nightlife. <laughs> Not because I was a dancer before, <laughs> it's because I come from Brazil. So for me, it was a really shock compared to Brazil and Sweden. It's very different ways to, for the nightlife. One thing that I really like in Sweden, they have it uh, on the night, they have 24 hour buses. So you don't need to, to take a cab and spend a lot of money. So for students, very good. Uh, and also on the weekends, we have the subway that work 24 hours so you can go around. Of course, during COVID times, we didn't have those things, of course. Uh, but uh, still, we have a lot of small things going on, but you need to know where the things are going to happen because they do not use the market as spread too much as like we have in Brazil that we do a lot. In Sweden, the things, you need to know people to know where things are going to happen, the good things. Um, so join the clubs at the university. We have a lot of those same clubs that they have at SSE. We have at uh, Stockholm University as well. And at the Stockholm University, you also can start your own club. If you feel like you create a club, we have the language cafe that if you want to teach your language, you can create clubs to teach there. You can start to create other clubs. So this help you to really engage with people from different places. And then we start to, to know what's going on in the whole city. Because the, the good thing with international programs it's like, it's a lot of international. It's really international. No, when I mean, it's really international. My class, I had like 23 people for different countries. And we were about like 27, 28 people on the class. So it's mean, you have practically one for each place of the world. That's, it's amazing. So that's going to help you with this nightlife, you know, what's going on, what's the good uh, thing. Uh, one thing that's good to experience in Sweden is the uh, secondhand shops. It's, you, I've never seen that around the world. This way, I, I think it's pretty much Swedish also. <laughs> it's, it's like a store where you go there and buy things that people sell. So you have also with the sustainability in the world, but you can find a lot of good things with very good price. So I really recommend if you come really to study in Sweden to experience this uh, Swedish way to do things. So that's my tips. 
Um, so I, I actually decided to touch upon the uh, accommodation topic uh, from the perspective also uh, from, of someone who uh, comes from a um, maybe perhaps a little bit poorer country. Um, if to, for me, there was a dilemma whether I should uh, find an accommodation more central place located or uh, further out from the city uh, center uh, because first of all if I was going to live in a city center that would limit my budget for going out but at the same time I uh, would uh, be close to all the events opportunities on the other hand living uh, a little bit further out uh, would uh, allow me to keep a uh, part of my budget for going out but uh, it would uh, I would need more time to to uh, commute and there is no right or wrong answer to that one I actually tried both <laughs> and I left half a year uh, six months I left a little bit further out and uh, and my strategy then was that I would go early in the morning, stay at the uni, and then don't go back uh, to 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 don't go back home immediately after after my classes, but stay in the in the city as long as possible. Enjoy, go out for beer, um, for coffee, um, and uh, only then in the evening go back to to home, and also stay in the library too, because you have to remember that you have to study. Uh, and that's the main purpose why you're there, right? Uh, and the second half of the year, I left uh, maybe not super central, but it was uh, I I was um, 15 uh, minutes away from the city center by underground, and then 25 I guess from the uni, and I had equally good time uh, because by then I also knew how can I how I can enjoy the city without spending a lot of money. So instead of uh, visiting uh, 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 roof uh, top bars, uh, we were going to student uh, bars and uh, or sometimes making even like house parties. And uh, and that was that was a way to go. And um, I guess at the end of the day, you have to find a good, good balance. Uh, uh, important messages not to forget uh, why you are there uh, was your uh, general purpose but not to forget to enjoy your time not to forget about socializing because as as we all said and as uh, asma mentioned networking is is the key <laughs> Um, and uh, getting involved with clubs, societies as much as you can that that is a definitely great thing to do because you you never know what uh, you can actually get out of it and what's waiting behind the corner, right? So um, um hundred percent of people uh, who won actually tried, right? So uh, if you're not trying, you will never uh, you will never succeed. Uh, yeah, so that's that's I guess that's my message regarding this topic uh, and i take it from there uh, your last comment about uh, networking i think most of the people who come from uh, international places have a problem with swedish people not being too friendly too uh, quickly <laughs> Uh, and they're known to be a bit shy in the beginning. And uh, so, I mean, these kind of uh, places, clubs and other uh, opportunities are very, very important to get that bond going and to experience how it is to have a friendship with the, with the Swedes. Because in the in their own settings, like in certain places, you might feel like, oh, they're a group together and like you're left out. But to, you know, it takes a while. They've been here for <laughs> a long time. So, yeah, do that. And um, um, for accommodation part, well, it was a nightmare for me <laughs> because um, um I don't want to scare people off, but in my final interview, uh, my uh, supervisors told me like, um, we won't be able to help you with the accommodation. So you have to fix it yourself. And I was living a year before in London and you know, it's crazy with the accommodation there as well. So I thought, well, how bad can it be? Really bad, <laughs> really, really bad. Uh, with the queue system, uh, because I, 
I mean, I'm coming from Pakistan at that point, and it's like, I have no cue points, and I don't know anyone here. So what I did, and I would recommend everyone of you to try, is to like get to know people through social media who are living here. Because uh, that's how I secured my very first accommodation that was just a mattress in a very blank room. <laughs> But still, I had a place to sleep. So, I mean, uh, there are other ways to do things. But, um, yeah, that accommodation can be a very big challenge. If you think that it's going to be easy, try to, like, you know, prepare a little bit, a bit early. No, thank you, Asma, for, for sharing kind of a realistic experience as well of a lot of accommodation problems that we all have with finding somewhere but particularly when you're a student and you're ba balancing funds maybe moving away from home for the first time it is really important to keep having conversations with people both that you that you do know or people that you can trust also with any of the people at the university who can try and help you but also like you said head online see what's on there what kind of people are willing to help because, um, you know, with everything else that's going on in the world, there are people out there who are willing to help out in some way. So thank you so much for sort of sharing all your different experiences as well. And certainly Sweden has a lot to offer when it comes to kind of culture and, and people and possibilities. Um, I think the other thing that we are going to need to do is answer this question that has come in. And it's kind of, kind of moving back to actually um, study, but it says, what is the most popular degree people study at your chosen university? And I'm guessing this person is asking this because maybe they're trying to um, find out where, I guess where, if they've got a specific thing they want to study, where they would like to go that it's really, really popular, I, I presume. But if that person wants to clarify, then, then feel free to. But yeah, we'll quickly go through that and then head on to the next question. Thank you. Um, I am unsure, unfortunately, of what is statistically the biggest program at my school. Um, I will say, though, that like SSE is very known for having really good business and economics program, both within Europe, but also just within Sweden itself. Um, I think the program that I'm in myself is quite popular in the sense that it's ranked in the Financial Times and so a lot of people know about it and want to go to it but it's quite selective we're only 53 people in my class currently uh, and they usually don't take on more than about like 55 per year or so um, but then on the flip side I know that the master's in finance for example is about 150 people and so it's almost three times bigger um, and then, of course, there are bachelor's studies as well at my university, where it, I think it's two different programs, and they're quite a lot bigger than the master's as well. So uh, I unfortunately don't have a very concrete answer, uh, but there's, if you want to do business or economics, I would definitely recommend SSC as a very viable option at the very least. Yeah, I would recommend that also if you want to do business. But if you want to do humanities, arts, <laughs> and natural science, come to us. <laughs> because basically it's like that. It's the common university is very uh, humanistic. That's very interesting because I had a lot of friends that come to study here with this um, positivist approach to quantitative data in mind to do research. And then they come later and say, you know, I figured out that qualitative research is also good. That's very interesting how things uh, is different uh, from so come universe to other universe as well. Um, by guess, because I studied uh, uh, education, I think that the most common problems is, are related to technology because it's a trend right now, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we have here in Sweden a website, I think it's SSB, right, Emma? I think SSB, that you, you can check exactly the amount of applications per course if you want to really look for that. But don't be afraid to apply for some course if you have a lot of applications because the um, letter of intention that you write uh, to present yourself because you have to do that is a really important and they really check. So it's not about uh, uh, the high score you have, but the other qualities also. So in my program, we have people for different countries with different backgrounds, also different levels when they think about English and everything because they try to 
creates a, a very diverse group because you learn a lot for different perspectives. So in that case, not to be afraid to apply if you feel that, oh, it's too much to apply because too many people. So yeah, just do it. Um, uh, for me, it was it was quite interesting because there were only 20, I guess, 22 of us uh, in the in the program. But uh, I don't find it surprising. I guess uh, I would like to comment on what Elma said. Um, it's um, it's it's usually it's always like this that uh, um, uh, you go from general to specific, right? And your education way uh, education route is similar. You start with a bachelor. Uh, and uh, you you tackle a, a huge um, a huge area of uh, educational area right and then you specialize and uh, as you go forward you will meet less and less people who are interested in the same uh, thing as you are that is a good sign right because that means that you are going into that into depth into detail and you explore some specific areas and I guess if we talk to asthma, is uh, perhaps it's it's even it's even less, right? Uh, people who who are doing the same thing as she does, um, and there is uh, absolutely um, nothing bad in you know finding uh, studies, finding courses where you have a lot of applicants. Um, it all is a good sign. It, there is not uh, there is no rule that it's a good or bad sign, right? But it's uh, you cannot measure everything by just by looking at the amount of applicants. But generally, as I said, the pattern is from going to, from general to specific, and uh, that's that's important to to remember. Um, I agree uh, that in my case, I didn't had a lot of competition in the beginning, but well, I think I spread the word a bit too much, <laughs> so now it's everywhere. Uh, but um, uh, in terms of this question about um, where are the most applicants based, I think uh, the uh, we have three faculties. Uh, so one is like humanities and social sciences. The other is uh, medical and pharmacology. And the other is um, um, science and technology. And that is, I would say, the most popular, uh, the last one with the international students. So I have been there and I've seen like how much diversity there is uh, compared to the other departments that I've been. So I would say science and technology and like, you know, the, the hardcore science, especially like in physics uh, and other subjects, I have seen a lot of international student and international interest. So, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I hope that's answered um, your question about it. not so much popularity, but perhaps more about specialising in a certain subject and where that might be a bit more um, apparent. But I would definitely go onto the website and have a look. Sorry, Sydney, did you did you say a specific website? And if so, is it possible to get a link and pop it in the chat? Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly trying to find it because oh. I'm very bad to remember names and I forgot my name sometimes, but I'm going to send the, this as soon as possible. <laughs> Otherwise, if so I, I, I do not read now, so just read me out later and I can send to people uh, yeah. directly also. Uh, yeah, there but I'm looking go. for Thank that. you so much. That's fantastic. Um, obviously, as well, you can sort of do your research on Google and things because I know out there there is a lot of, um, you know, resources about how many people are on the course, but actually what sort of courses are out there because I always had this thing where I went to uni and I studied something very general and then found out there was five different unique courses for specific you know um topics and I sort of wish that I had a bit more knowledge so really do your research and and have a look at what's out there so we're gonna finish on our final question I'm sorry that we um are gonna have to wrap up soon but I think the best way to end this because you guys have shared so much knowledge and wisdom is to Go back to your sort of high school self, your you know sixteen year old self, and what you wish you could tell tell them right now about where you are now, and about your experiences of Swedish university and about about living and studying in Sweden. What would be your two pieces of advice that people can take away with them from this panel today? Ooh, uh, well, I think maybe going back to what I said at the start of the panel, it is okay and actually very encouraged to change your mind. <laughs> you are allowed to change your trajectory as many times as you want to, um, because at least in my experience, I've found that sort of like 
at the end of the day, it's the cumulative experience that matters. And so everything that I learned when I was studying international relations, I have taken with me as I've gone into business administration. And then eventually that led me into international business, which is sort of, you know, without me knowing that before I started, the perfect cross section for me uh, and for what I'm interested in. Um, so I think I really want to emphasize that it's okay to change your mind. And even though things might feel a little bit out of control while you're changing your mind, uh, you will get them under control eventually. It's completely fine. Um, and I'd say if I were to go back to my high school self, I think I'd also um, want to remind her that, you know, being an introvert is not a bad thing. I'm a very introverted person. And I think it took me a little while to sort of get into a groove with um, sort of the social aspect of being at uni and whatnot, especially when I moved back to Stockholm by myself and I didn't really know anyone my own age. So it took a while to get there. Um, but, you know, I would really want to emphasize uh, the importance of sort of like grabbing on to different types of social opportunities and going to clubs. And when you go, I mean, if you can't manage to talk to anyone, that's fine, as long as you go, because you might talk to someone the next time. Uh, and so don't be too hard on yourself, but also don't let yourself off too easy, maybe. Uh, try and sort of walk the line, maybe. I don't know. I would say uh, also do not be too hard to yourself in, in both sense, uh, because I was too focused on at the beginning, she said, 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 and later we understand, okay, I need to have a good time with my friends and every start things change. Uh, but if I go back on time before graduation and everything, I would say to start to look a little more in the broader perspective, what what's out there? Because sometimes we don't know exactly what you want to do. And just because you don't talk to other people, you cannot even see that there is possibilities. There is a lot of possibilities. Uh, if you cannot pay to come to the Sweden, that is a lot of possibility for scholarships, for example. So to not give up on yourself either. Uh, because depend of the country that you come from, I come from Brazil, that is this, uh, is a poor country in Asian world. We, we don't go out that much. Uh, uh, depending on the area that you come, you, have, you don't have access to information. But if you understand how to find information, how to ask the right question for the people around you, you start to build your connections to go abroad. And now I'm here and I just finished a master's in Sweden. And I soon going to do a bit here as well because box check, it's a pay position. <laughs> you are the place that you have to pay to do a PhD. Here they pay you to do your research. So, and I discovered this because I ask people and they say, okay, that is this and then and so you go. So do not give up yourself, look for outside what's there and be just like water, reshape yourself every time that you need to do that because life is a constant change and education is also that. So if you feel that you have to change, change it again. Don't work, change it again. Just be flexible and love yourself and keep dancing. That's my advice. <laughs> Wow, I, uh, Sydney, I, I love what you said, your last sentence. Uh, guys, my main message is to be uh, agile. And life is not uh, not at all about pre-planning uh, everything you're going to do. And uh, sometimes I, I think that I would have done things completely different um, after, after my high school. And then I end up uh, with a conclu conclusion that uh, I, I, still, I still don't regret anything that I've done. Uh, because life is um, all about collecting small pieces and not looking back, but looking forward and thinking what you can make out of it. And uh, definitely for, I guess, for uh, many of you, Sweden might not be the place where you're going to stay until the end of your life, but it, it wasn't for me either. But uh, but I'm still super happy that I have been there, that uh, I made a choice, that I applied, I graduated and and now after graduating i um ever since i think what how i can use it the best way possible and uh and it's uh all about um creating then uh, reflecting and making out best out of what you have uh, at the time in your hand if you need better cards you go and collect them right and uh, you start you go you, you do something else you change direction you start another degree 
there is no a right or wrong way. Um, what I would have uh, done differently uh, prior to starting studying, not talking particular specifically about Stockholm University, but in general studies in general, I would have um, um, done a gap year. I would go abroad. I would um, uh, learn uh, English. Uh, I would also make sure that I have enough resources to uh, enjoy my uh, study time. Um, uh, because then you really want to have this healthy balance between working, studying, and uh, not saying parting, but socializing, right? And um, and for me, it was a little bit um, not well balanced, but um, I managed, right? <laughs> And and uh, and I'm and really I'm looking back. I'm happy uh, with what I've done, and I'm really happy uh, with uh, where I am at the moment. Uh, so yeah, also stay positive, right? <laughs> and yeah, that that are main messages that I want to wanted to tell you about today. Great advice from everyone. Um, so yeah, take all of that. And also, like, as I said, go easy on yourself. And also know yourself, like try to explore what is it that you want because um, sometimes we choose one thing and we our head gets stuck in that we need to kind of think out of the box and that is very much encouraged in Sweden and I love that every student almost I have met here after high school takes a sabbatical year they take their time to explore what they want to do and I think that is a great uh, thing to do before uh, jumping into the university decision uh, and also travel just like know the world you live in you know it's it's so much fun it's it's such a learning experience and I have learned I have grown so much from the experience I've had and um uh, don't worry about the risks also too much. I mean, you can do your research, you can learn about things and everything, but you cannot really live that moment. Uh, so when you go, you see, you experience, it's, it's a very different uh, thing from what you can read or uh, do. But I mean, yes, do your research, but still uh, take the risk explore go and uh, find yourself i mean that's that's probably my advice guys thank you so much i wish we could put that in a little book and just send it to everyone but um we touched on a few things there we spoke about keeping inquisitive it's okay to change your mind be flexible be agile don't be so hard on yourself you know you're in your 20s or whatever age and you're trying to figure things out that's all part of it it's about actually taking in and embracing those small moments that kind of puzzle together your own unique route build connections with work and with people and see it as a time where you can explore and get to know the uniqueness of you and that could in include things if, if you can afford it and if you can manage it exploring and finding out about different cultures and traveling and I think also it seems with um, Swedish, Swedish culture in particular all about balance about having a balance between all the different kind of parts of life and that's something that maybe if you want to study and live there you should definitely take on board but we're sadly at the end of today's panel um thank you so so much to all of our wonderful panelists so for everyone's giving a virtual round of applause um <laughs> for sharing your helpful insights into Swedish universities. Also a big thank you to everyone that has joined us today, wherever you are in the world. And once again, if you need any help with university and career guidance, do check out our website and our Instagram, and you can contact all of our panelists with the LinkedIn and emails that we have in the chat at the, at the side here. Um, but I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining and it was lovely to meet you all.